Hi, my name is Chris Zimmerman. I'm a general surgery resident at the University of Wisconsin. In this video, you will see an ICU team rounding on a severely injured older adult, Laurel Rogers. As part of their daily routine, they use a version of the best case, worst case communication tool adapted specifically for the ICU, combined with the geriatric trauma outcome score in order to discuss prognosis during rounds. Okay, next patient. Um, so Miss Rogers, um, overnight events, um, we were able to come down on her FIA2 to 30%. Um, everything else on her vent stayed the same. We did have some issues with uh, agitation overnight, requiring a little bit more propofol. Um, I think that's it for overnight. Um, Kevin, they're from a nursing perspective. Yeah, so like she said, we had some uh, a little bit more agitation last night. Um, every time I tried to wean the propofol, she got a little bit, um, her face kind of scrunched together. I couldn't tell if she was in pain or if she was just grimacing or agitated. Um, other than that, like she's been doing pretty pretty stable. She's definitely came ICU positive, um, and, uh, but otherwise doing okay. Okay. All right. Uh, exam labs imaging. Um, so on exam, she is mechanically ventilated and sedated. Did not. Um, okay. Let's go to plan. Um, so plan. This is uh, Miss Laurel Rogers. She's a 67 year old woman who presented to the ED three days ago after a level one trauma involving a fall from standing. Um, while she was walking her dog. Um, her injuries include the right subdural hematoma, complex facial fractures, and multiple extremity fractures. Um, so going by system for neuro and pain, um, she has the subdural hematoma that has been stable on repeat CT, neurosurgery is following her pain and pure rates. Um, and for prophylaxis, we'll keep her on the PPI until she's extubated, um, and we'll restart sub heparin when neurosurgery gives the okay. Um, so for Outlook, what can we expect from Ms. Rogers if everything went as well as we could hope for? Yeah, so I think um, since admission, I think her mortality risk and her risk of not going home right after discharge is probably actually higher than it was um, the day after admission, um, especially with the, her delirium being worsening overnight. We, we know that, that seems to be more associated with worse outcomes. So, um, But, you know, I think if we're lucky, we can get her extubated tomorrow. Um, she'll probably be in the ICU for a couple days after that just for us to make sure her respiratory status is okay and uh, we can get her to a general care floor and uh, at that point her facial swelling should be good enough to where plastic surgery can start doing their operations. She's going to need at least two operations for her face um, and my hope is that during the course of her recovery we can keep her out of the ICU and still keep her in a general care setting. Um, at that point, she will start the long road to recovery. Lots of physical therapy, lots of occupational therapy. It'll be long and it will be painful. Um, but I think she'll stay in the hospital for probably two or three weeks, um, kind of getting used to that. And then um, she'll need to go to a nursing home following this and continue rehab. Um, I'm worried that she's not going to be able to be independent again, um, like she was before at least. So, but I think that's probably her best case scenario. All right, got it. I got all the orders. All right. Any questions for us? Oh, the, the CT scan, do you know when that's going to happen today? Yeah, so that should be in a few hours, around 10 o'clock. Okay. All right, great. Next patient.